I need to change the thumbnail. Give me a second. Hold on, I'll start in a minute. That should take care of that.
one more thing that needs to be taken care of. Okay. It's loud, uh, hold on. Let me see if the volume's a little bit too loud. Let's see, desktop audio. Yeah, desktop audio shouldn't be too loud. I'm doing better. I mean, I won't lie, I wish that drama I went through never had to happen. But I guess YouTube is going to be YouTube sometimes. I'm hoping the stream will make up for that. I think what what makes the what made that whole situation so terrible is how it was all caused by a comment that was heavily taken out of context and just people getting involved that probably shouldn't have gotten involved in a supreme lack of communication. Nah, don't worry, you didn't miss anything. All you missed was me changing the thumbnail because I forgot to before I started the stream. I think I would have mostly ignored the drama, but when I saw that some of my fans were starting to turn against me, I knew I had to do, I knew I had to do something because I didn't want my fans getting the wrong impression of me over some BS. I mean, on one hand, I can understand why people were frustrated, but on the other hand, I think they were way too quick to judgment, which is funny because that's what Fish has been criticizing me for for so long, saying that I'm so quick to judge or make assumptions, but that's exactly what they did about me. Many of them were hypocrites, others were just petty about it. I had to listen to the guy who made one of the first response videos to me say, Oh, I can't take you seriously because the way you responded in that Discord. And I'm like, um, so because I decided to criticize Enigma for some of the dumb or useless criticism he gave me. Not all of it, but some of it. That therefore means you can't take me seriously. Wow. And then, of course, making the absurd claim that I don't take criticism well. While in that same comment section, responding to someone who gave me criticism. Saying that they're going to respond to my top 10 worst lesbian characters in anime. And I told her, I welcome your criticism, but maybe wait because I'm already remaking that list as we speak. And it would probably be best for you to wait. Because I'll admit, I wasn't too happy with some of the choices on that list. You know? But it is what it is. I'm going to try not to dwell on it too much. If those three choose to continue to try to keep the drama going, that's on them.
cool. What I can't help but to notice about this game is that the main logo for this game is the is the brand of sacrifice from the Berserk series. I don't know if that was intentional or not. I think a lot of parties involved could have handled that situation better. Most importantly, Raven, because I kept telling everyone, if they just communicated with me, this could have been easily avoided. This is why I tell people, always try to talk to the person before you just go around trying to block them or make videos about them. I don't know why that's so hard for some people. No, I posted that just for shits and giggles. I'm not a brony. I've never watched My Little Pony. I've only seen a few clips, and I would never watch that show. The art style is actually so colorful, it genuinely makes me sick. Like, I physically cannot watch it. Ah, damn it. Ah, screw it. I won't lie, I mostly got this game for the art style. Dang it, I'm still working on getting that pairing right. Ow. Whoa, what the hell? No, but I might have to check it out. Ah, crap. And I can't tell if I suck at these Metroidvania style games or not. Oh yes, if you remember that Scorch guy I've mentioned before, he straight up said the reason he became a brony was because of Death Battle. Thanks for that, Death Battle. Death Battle just needs to stop sometimes.
Turning people into bronies is not acceptable. I've seen a couple of Josh Scorcher's videos. Ow. No, they won't stop, especially because they have fans that will blindly support them no matter what they do. And with the millions of views they get, it's never going to matter. Like I've said, they can upload anything and people will support what they do. Like, I'm not joking. They could legit upload that bait death battle I, I did of... Uh, Glenn Quagmire versus Rin Coco No Way, they could legit upload that, unironically, and still get millions of views. That's the, Death Battle knows at this point, they can do anything now. That, that is the curse of success. Dang it. Yeah, so I've heard. I'm not surprised. You know what? Believe it or not, that was an episode I was planning for Blood Royale. I should have known deep down inside that that was, a de that that was an idea shitty enough for Death Battle. So, yeah, needless to say, that one's not happening. If they do if they do Dio versus Alucard, I am not going to be happy because Cartoon Fight Club already did that. Now sure he did a poor job of it, but it already happened. If you're taking things that Cartoon Fight Club has done, you give up any credibility you once had. Cartoon Fight Club is uniquely terrible. I would be ashamed of myself if I if I ever allowed fame and success to go to my head like Death Battle does. I would consider myself a failure.
go. Gotcha. Ha. Even Torian, sadly, isn't infallible. I see him do dumb stuff. Whoa. Honestly, if Death Battle or anyone takes the bait of doing Glenn Quagmire versus Rin, I'm going to laugh my ass off. Because I uploaded that video to prove a point of when you value similarities and connections above all else when it comes to making a good versus matchup, you can justify the most insane matchups, like Glenn versus Rin. If you go off of the standards of people like Fish, Death Battle, Kevin, and more, then Rin versus Glenn is a perfect matchup because they got the similarities. Like I said in the description, two perverts with hearts of gold that will do anything to get some action and are in love with people they are forbidden to be with. Take this. Yeah, the main thing holding back Blood Royale is the animation side. I just need more animators because I'm looking to do more more homemade stuff. 2D animation, 3D animation. I want to avoid Sprite as much as possible unless I'm doing a matchup where it makes sense to do pixel art. Like something retro or something. So yeah, if you ever meet any animators that are looking for work, send them my way. And unlike some other channels, I won't waste their talents on garbage. Whoa, what the hell? 
Oh crap. Ow. Whoa, what the hell? Oh boy, these things bring back memories of the hunchbacks in the Castlevania series. I hated those things. Because I have the money to afford animation, I just need some actual animators that are interested. Ow, shit. Fuck. Fuck. Damn it. Now it's right back to where I was. Damn it. I was total bull crap.
Dawn. That's the easy choice. Dawn makes mi makes Misty look like southern trash. Yeah, that's real fair. Yeah, it literally sells itself on Dark Souls and Castlevania difficulty. have a downward strike that'd be really useful about now
I don't know why you're always feeling like you're being ignored, Maverick. You have no evidence to suggest that I am at all ignoring you. Plus, it's a live stream. There's a lot of other people that are, that are trying to talk too. You're not the only one here. Source Filmmaker does not come with models. That's not what it's for. You have to have them on hand already. No, not really. Because Mordred doesn't really do all that much that's best boy material. I mean, yeah, she dresses up like a knight. She fights, but if that were really the standard, then any woman would be then any woman who's slightly like Mordred would fit that bill. With a Stolfo, it's a little bit more than that. Mordred doesn't even really do all that much outside of dress up in armor to even make herself look like a boy. Yeah. I mean, I can see where people are coming from, but truth be told, sure you could call Mordred a tomboy, but Mordred doesn't really do all that much to warrant the name to warrant the title best boy. Yes, I've heard of the presence. He's only touted as one of the most powerful entities in the entire DC universe. Probably not. Saber is uniquely overpowered, to say the least. It also depends, because there's multiple different versions of Saber, multiple different versions of Astolfo.
Oh, crap. Um, not very powerful. Maimasaki is just a normal human being. The only kind of ability she has, if you can even call it that, is she can see the color of death. So basically, she can see dead people. That's really about it. Outside of that, she's a normal human being that can be easily killed. Yeah, that would be Ryder Astolfo. And again, it still depends on different factors. Who is Saber's master? Because if it's Shiro, then yeah, Saber's screwed. But even then, it still depends. There are so many different factors that go into Fate Servants. But if you give her... Avalon, then the uh, then the fight's over if she has that. However, Astolfo does have his supernatural luck. Which does give him the ability of fate manipulation, and it is higher than Saber's. Both. Traps are a unique specimen that can be both.
but traps typically fall more under the waifu category, but technically they're both. Reverse traps, yes, they can also fall under both, but again, it can depend. It can be a little bit difficult to explain sometimes with traps. It's both. I bought it on Steam, but it is on console. I believe you can get it on both the D on both the Nintendo Shop and PlayStation Store. But why would you buy any PlayStation products? I can't imagine why anyone would want a PlayStation. You might as well just buy a $400 brick. It would make about as much sense. Nope, I'm not buying a PlayStation 5. I don't buy Sony products anymore. I've been boycotting them for a long time. I'm done with Sony's crap. Once they started implementing censorship policies for their games, I was done with them. I have no respect for anyone who thinks that censorship is acceptable. It's never, ever acceptable. Not much, just playing a game. It's funny how Sony fans Four years would make fun of Nintendo for being the kitty company, yet now it's Nintendo that's putting out all the mature games and it's Sony that's censoring everything because it's too offensive, violent, or sexy. Well, who's laughing now, Sony fans?
And what's funny is that claim that Nintendo was always a kiddie company never really held much water because it was Nintendo that had possibly the first survival horror game ever on its platform. It's the legendary Sweet Home. That came out all the way on the super, all the way back on the Famicom, aka the Japanese NES. It was so violent, messed up, and scary that Nintendo of America at the time, being the complete Puritan sissies that they were, didn't release Sweet Home in the West, even though they should have. If you've played Sweet Home, you would know exactly why it's BS to claim that Nintendo is a kitty company. Yep, the 3DS has one of the only home home ports of Corpse Party. As far as my knowledge, the Corpse Party game that was on the 3DS is the only known port of it. What the hell is this thing? Ow. What the heck? Okay, I'm not sure if I trust that. Okay. Oh, okay, there we go. Back to that upgrade station. Speaking of 682, I still need to remember to make my review of Kara versus 682. Yeah. 
Slender Man, well, he used to be creepy. Now he's a joke. Only thing I can say about Slender Man is he's pretty overpowered for anyone who's interested in putting him in versus battles. But he's not scary anymore. Doomsday versus 682 is what probably should have been done instead of Hulk versus Doomsday or even Kara versus 682. But I guess that would make too much sense. Uh, no. FNAF is not powerful. FNAF is a frickin' punchline. And no, those games were never scary. Yeah, both Doomsday and 682 are unfairly overpowered, but that's probably why they should have fought. Someone like Kara, regardless of what fan war might tell you, she would not, under any circumstance, be able to even injure 682. Her attacks wouldn't even register as attacks to it. And it's time ability wouldn't do jack. Because again, if you are 4D or stronger, you are above the concept of time. Meaning time is meaningless to you. For example, in the Final Fantasy series, there are beings that are stronger than 4th dimensional. They're either 4th dimensional or stronger. For example, beings like Ultimecia or X Death, and guess what? If you try to use ma if you try to use time magic on them, like slow, it doesn't do anything to them because time is meaningless to them. They're above it. Oh, come on, give me a break. So did Fan War. Fan War, oh, he was so salty about Doomsday winning. And, his, and their arguments for why Hulk beats Doomsday never makes any sense. I'm like, okay, I get it. Hulk is very popular. Just because he's popular doesn't automatically mean that justifies him winning. Again, how is Hulk supposed to kill a being that cannot be killed by physical force?
And it also depends on the version of Hulk that you're using. Now, sure, if you're using the version, if you're using God Hulk, you know, the one that's the dark half of the one above all, then sure, maybe you would have an argument. But if you're using regular Avengers Hulk, yeah, Hulk is going to get his ass handed to him. That's not even going to be much of a fight. Like, you have to, you have to lowball Doomsday so hard just to have Hulk win, and it's sad. I'm not sure. I've been thinking of all kinds of different ideas for a Christmas special. I don't think I'm going to do the 12 days of death again, if I'm being honest. I might do something similar to it, but I don't know if I'll do that again. Because as I announced, I'm only going to be reviewing Death Battle part-time from here on out. Because if I go back to reviewing them full-time, I'm going to lose my damn mind. I don't even know what that childhood fear thing is. I see it all the time, but I don't even know what it's all about. I know you're looking forward to that review, but I'm not because that 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 episode is going to be so frustrating to talk about. It might be my longest re it might end up being my longest review to date because unlike Death Battle, I have everything straight from the mouth of the person who created it. Every every dumb decision that was made, I have some kind of explanation for. And believe me, they're all about as terrible as you would expect. I even have access to the script. So yeah, that might end up being a long one because there's so much wrong with that episode. The research is wrong. The music is wrong. The animation is wrong. The story is wrong. Like, nothing about it works. Like, it's so bad. It made me feel bad for the poor guy who had to animate that. Because he tried his best to make it work. But the thing is... No amount of good animation can fix that trash. I'm even thinking about uploading a video simply titled how Kara versus 682 would actually happen and it would just be Kara getting killed in 5 seconds by 682 because realistically that is what would happen Kara wouldn't do anything she would show up and get killed immediately it wouldn't even be a fight but fan war has never been one to take realism into account and yes, there is a certain amount of realism that must be taken into account even with these fictional characters. Otherwise, it breaks the audience's suspension of disbelief. But people like Fan War never take things like suspension of disbelief into account because he'll say... Well, it's a fictional fight between fictional characters. It's just for fun. Why well, should I have to focus so much on, on believability if they're just fictional characters?
an example of how poor the research was on behalf of Fan War is he had to ask me and one of my research partners, Sam. That's just an abbrevi- that's just a nickname for his full name. But um, anyway, I digress. So we told him that 682 has an avatar similar to that of Darkseid. And his argument was, show me proof of that. And it's like, I thought you did your research. So we did show him proof, and he still just pretended like, oh no, he doesn't have an avatar. What are you talking about? Like, you just can't win with these people sometimes. Six eight two would absolutely annihilate Dante. Dante is literally weaker than than Kara. Dante would die horrifically. He would make one wise ass remark and then die immediately. Ow. Did you die already? Yeah, it goes to show that he doesn't do any research, and the people he hires to do his research for him, they're just as bad. I've been in his Discord, I've seen the people he hires to do research. They are a special kind of terrible. Kara would never win. Fallout series, it used to be good, now it's trash because Bethesda got a hold of it. Should have never left the hands of the people who made it. Bethesda even admitted that they didn't know that the people who play Fallout play Fallout for Fallout. Kind of. He didn't have a fight animation, but he did go over who he thinks would most likely win. Damn it, how do I keep ending up back in this place? Bethesda is trash. And the sad part is Bethesda has been a trash company for a long time. But for some reason, we held them in such high regard. You can look back through the history of Bethesda. Bethesda has not had a very good history at all. Bethesda should be ashamed of itself for existing.
Why the hell should Kratos fight Mysterio? What sense does that make? Some of the opponents I see that people throw at Kratos, sometimes I don't get the logic. Yeah, I know I know I know his entire lineup for his next season and let's just say it ain't looking too pretty. I'm almost tempted to leak it, but I don't want to antagonize the guy any further because he's already shown himself willing to start drama. So, I just don't know if I should, but trust me, his Season 5 lineup, it ain't too pretty. There are some that are okay, and I was able to talk him out of doing one idea that would have been really bad, and he agreed to do something else. But even so, it's only a tiny victory, because there are other terrible ideas he has that he won't admit are terrible ideas. You know what I should do? I should feed Miles morale to Doomsday. Just because it'll be hilarious. Damn it. Get up there. Gotcha. Ow. Honestly, I'd probably do streams like this more often if I wasn't a part-time YouTuber. Like, ev like currently I am considered a part-time YouTuber rather than a full-time YouTuber. When I was living with my grandfather, I was able to do YouTube full-time, but now I can't because I have my job. I would love to do YouTube full-time, but sadly that's not possible. Oh, shit. Ah, get away from me. Uh, I don't like it when enemies just gang up like that. If you are interested, though, in helping me become a full-time YouTuber... The more merchandise I sell, which by the way, I'm working on putting a new shirt up on the merch store, it's going to be the first official Blood Royale merchandise. So I'm excited to put that up there. I'm just working on getting the design done and everything. Right now, I don't have access to fancy things like Photoshop. So it takes me a little bit longer to get this stuff done because I use all manner of different programs that do what Photoshop can do in just one program. Part of the turnoff of Photoshop for me is just how expensive it is nowadays.
But yeah, the more donations I get on Patreon and the more merch I sell, the more I could potentially be able to do this full time. In which case, you guys would go would go back to getting live streams and damn it. Live streams and videos more more often like I used to be able to do. I believe I already use Pixlr. I could be wrong, but I think that's something I already use. I also use a program called IPC, but that's going to become useless to me once Flash goes down, which is annoying. Then I got to find a new program to use, which I'm not looking forward to that. I don't know why they're discontinuing Flash. Bunch of a-holes is what they are. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Huh, it's the symbol of sacrifice again. I wish my boy Sam was watching this. I'd love to see his comments on that because he's a huge Berserk fan. Truth be told, not much scares me. There are some things out there that scare me, but not a lot. So I grew up off of horror movies, so not much intimidates me. Who throws rocks, honestly? What kind of sissy throws rocks? Oh yeah, because that's real fair. I really hate enemies like that.
Miles should probably not fight Midoriya. Because what is the logic behind that one? What, because Midoriya now has a quirk that's vaguely spider-like, so we could justify him fighting against Spider-Man? I already have plans of who Midoriya is going to fight. And it's not going to be another superhero. Because that would just be way too obvious of a thing to do. And I don't like doing the obvious thing. In fact, I get criticized for having matchups that aren't like what other people do or aren't stupidly obvious. Everyone's like, wait, there's not a lot of people asking for Ghost Rider. And I'm like, yeah, that's the point. Because a lot of these popular matchups are trash. They're terrible. One thing I might do if I can ever figure out how to stream gameplay footage of Final Fantasy Brave XPS. I want to show you guys some of the most BS super bosses you've ever seen. Like for any fellow Final Fantasy fans, if you think Yee's map from Final Fantasy XII was a bullcrap super boss, you haven't seen Jack. The super bosses in Final Fantasy Brave Exvius are freaking ridiculous. It takes damage within the millions just to even make a dent in their health. Oh, come on! Arrgh! Why is that gap there? I swear they put it there just to piss me off. One thing I'm discussing about potentially doing with my animator is releasing some concept fights. It'll just be some fights with animation without any research behind it. It's just going to be a concept of what could potentially be. And get him a little bit familiar with what he's going to be working with. Ow! I hate these things. A self-flagellator. Ugh! starting to get sick of doing the same thing over and over and over again.
if I did do Rin versus Glenn Quagmire, it would be a joke death battle. Just to, it would be a joke blood royale just to screw with people. And believe me, given how many people get triggered by the existence of Kodomo no Jiken, it is tempting. Oh, what? Stop sticking to the damn... Fuck this guy. Just die. Bastards. No, I think they're supposed to be some kind of zombies. checkpoint systems so much. The only time I find them mildly acceptable is in horror games. No, I don't. Ugh, I'm sick of those pussies throwing rocks at me. They are so annoying. Oh great, of course. Yeah, I just put another one there.
Really? Finally. Admittedly, when I do rage at games, I can rage pretty hard, depending on how annoying it is. Games are one of the only few things on this earth that has any kind of link to rage for me. I mean, why should those two fight? What, is it because they're both robots? Is that all there is to it? Huh, interesting. Not sure what clicking sound you're referring to. Uh, that depends. Uh, maybe I'd cosplay as them.
Sweet. This gives me Vietnam War flashbacks of that wind level from Ninja Gaiden 2. Oh my god, I hated that level. Why did this game have to bring that back? By the way, riddle me this, viewers. When people say, try to say Ninja Gaiden, but end up saying Ninja Gaiden, where the hell do they keep getting the Y from? Like, that always drives me nuts. Whenever people pronounce Ninja Gaiden wrong, and they call it Ninja Gaiden, I always wonder, where do they keep getting the Y from? There is no Y in it, so how would it be Ninja Gaiden? Sure, it has an A in it, but there's an I that it, that's also there. Do they just assume the I is silent or something? I don't get it. That has always puzzled me. <gasps> I'm gonna have to dock this game points for not having an obnoxiously long game over screen. How am I supposed to feel like I'm playing Symphony of the Night if every time I die, the game doesn't take five minutes to start back up again? Yes, I've been meaning to review Not Death Battle for quite some time. I don't know what's been taking me so long to get to it. Those guys are so bad, they make fan war look good. Yeah, as the as the nerd pointed out, Castlevania Symphony of the Night just isn't the same as the old Castlevanias because there's too many easy ways around a certain difficulty. Maybe you maybe you don't have a certain weapon or maybe you're just not at a high enough level or there's some kind of special item that can help you just completely break the game. 
Whereas in the old Castlevania games, you didn't have that. You just had to you just had to face the problem head on. There was no easy way around it. There was no cheap gimmicks. You just beat the game. All you had was your own wit and reflexes. And I have to agree with the nerd on that. That's why I don't buy that Symphony of the Night is the best Castlevania game. I've never subscribed to that mentality. Sure, I have no doubt that Symphony of the Night is a good game, and it did usher in a new style for the Castlevania series. But nothing beats old school Castlevania. Nothing. I mean, boot up Castlevania 4 and then try to tell me that Symphony of the Night is better than it. You can't. You could, I could believe you saying that you personally prefer Symphony of the Night over the fourth one, but to say that it's better than the fourth one, I would press X to doubt on that. Ow. Well, that was cheap. I'm just gonna say this right now. Rooster Teeth characters are going nowhere near death. Are going nowhere near Blood Royale. I am not going to humiliate Blood Royale by having such trash characters on it. I'm also not gonna have any Mary Stu Mary Sue's or Gary Stews either. So, Cora, Ray, Kirito, Steven, none of them will be popping up on Blood Royale. Ever. I do not like Mary Sue characters. They are disgusting. I believe there have been some examples of metal in the Castlevania series. I don't know. I'm going to have to get back to you on that. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make any of those jumps. Ah, there we go. Symphony of the Night had a lot of interesting music in it. I won't lie. I mean, the Shaft theme alone was pretty interesting.
Damn it, if I could just jump a little higher, I could cheap shot this guy. Oh, come on. I won't PM you, but I will show you something based on what we talked about yesterday. Ha! Try to hit me now. No. All the Ruby characters are terrible. Not one of them is interesting or even slightly decent. Even the one supposed good character, Yang, she's terrible. I mean, I don't know how people delude themselves into thinking that Ruby characters are good. I just can't, I don't understand. I mean, you would have to be the most forgiving person on the planet to enjoy a Ruby character or even think that they're good. I mean, it's one thing to like a Ruby character, but God forbid it's another thing to think that they're well-written or interesting. I don't know how anyone deludes themselves into thinking that. Damn it. I timed that jump. I timed that dodge wrong. You know what's... Okay. Okay, you're free to like them, but Ruby and Akame are not good characters. Not by any stretch of the imagination. Akame is just a bland Kundere assassin. There's not really all that much to her. All the characters in Akame Ga Kill are just one-note stereotypes. They're the anime equivalent of horror movie canon fodder. I believe I addressed this in my 10 anime I hate that everyone else likes, but on the off chance that I didn't, well, here's the harsh reality. That's why none of the characters in Akame Ga Kill are any good. Because they're just the equivalent of horror movie cannon fodder. I mean, I guess if you like one-note characters that have no depth to them, then sure, you could probably like characters like Akame. I mean, I don't know why, because there's much other interesting characters out there. I don't even think I'm going to bother fighting that guy. Because each character in Akame Ga Kill has exactly one trope or characteristic, and that's it. Like, there's literally a guy whose whole character is that he's a clean freak. That's it. Like, what the hell? And I'm supposed to give a crap when these characters die? Why should I care? It's the equivalent of caring about slasher movie characters. I mean, unless it's a Laurie Strode or something like that, nobody's going to care when they die. It's like, oh no, this one-dimensional character died. Oh, the horror. Darn.
And what I think is even worse about the Akame Ga Kill characters is that you can see their deaths coming a mile away because for some reason Akame Ga Kill thinks it's brilliant to tell the character's backstory five minutes before they die or sometimes during their death. What is the point? Why even do that? Why even bother with a backstory? If they're just going to die in the next five minutes, or you're going to tell us their backstory as they're dying or after they're dead. Not only that, but I, I can't believe this gets past people. Akame Ga Kill has one of the worst gay characters I have ever seen in my life. The gay character in Akame Ga Kill is just offensively bad. I don't know how anyone deludes themselves into thinking that those characters are good. Like, people want to talk about offensive portrayals of gay characters. Okay, how about you mention that a-hole from Akame Ga Kill? Showing a character's backstory like five minutes before they die or literally during their death like Naruto likes to do is just terrible. That is a perfect example of poor storytelling and character writing. Because we can't get invested in the character if as soon as you tell us their backstory, they're already dead or they're going to die within the next few minutes. How can, how can we possibly care? In my anime I've been writing for the past two years, the character's backstories are established way before they even come close to even potentially dying. Because you want people to get invested into your character before killing them off. What the hell? Mm. Ow. Wait. Did she just instant kill me? Ugh. It's taking a lot out of me not to rage quit. That just was bullshit. Wow.
Oh, come on. I hate it when I'm ever so... Dang it! Oh my god! There's nothing special about Ghostface. He's just a normal human being. Ghostface has no supernatural abilities of any kind. Michael Myers at least has psychopathic strength and implied regeneration abilities. What does Ghostface have? Ghostface isn't even meant to be anything special. He's just meant to be a parody of slasher villains. You have to remember, Ghostface exists in a in a uh, meta parody universe. What the hell? Ugh, piss off. You wanna be cheap, I can be cheap too, game. Frickin' attack me while I'm trying to heal, what kind of crap is that? Joker versus Ghostface makes no sense. Also, Joker would annihilate Ghostface. Remember, Joker has god-tier manipulation abilities. Remember, he's able to manipulate the likes of Batman and mother-effing Superman. What is Ghostface gonna do to him? No, no! I am so sick of this crap! I thought that stupid falling backwards in the nearest pit crap died with old school Castlevania. What the hell? Who thinks it's a good idea to bring crap like that back? That was a thing back then that made games that made games shit, not fun. Might I recommend before suggesting Palpatine, 
Keep in mind, he has overpowered abilities like Essence Transfer. Meaning he, he can exist through other hosts. I'm not even going to fight this guy. Ow, would you die already? Please be a checkpoint around here somewhere. Sure, why not? Ah, crap. Oh, wow, Lucy versus Carrie, how original. How much thought did you put into that one? Like two seconds? Well, I'm guessing this is a blatant Dark Souls reference. 
It's about as subtle as that brand of sacrifice symbol. Maverick, if you keep asking over and over again like an insane person, I'm not going to show it to you at all. If I kept trying to get past that part of the game, I'm going to go insane. Uh, I'm not even going to address Android 18 versus Zero. Also, keep in mind, Lucy is one of the most powerful telekinetics of all time. So you can't just throw any telekinetic at her. Because they would get slaughtered.
Tatsumaki versus Lucy isn't any better. Finding the right opponent for any character is never easy. Because you can't just take a character that has the same powers as them or personality, throw them at them, and call it a day. It's never that simple. A lot, not all, but a lot of telekinetics would die horribly trying to fight Lucy. Because what you have to understand is, Lucy's telekinetic powers are unique. As far as my knowledge, there's not anyone out there that has telekinetic powers that are like Lucy's at all. The closest you have is maybe Accelerator from the Certain Magical Index universe, but... His telekinetic powers do not work the exact same way as Lucy's, despite also being called vectors. And if you think Lucy's overpowered, Accelerator is even more overpowered. So it's going to be even more of a crapshoot with him. Really? People always suggest Lara Croft versus Jill Valentine, and I've never understood that matchup. Even to this day, I don't get it. Please keep in mind that Jill Valentine was the same girl that killed Nemesis. Please keep that in mind.
Well, that's good. I hope you get the job. Mewtwo is another unfairly overpowered telekinetic, but he's even more unfairly overpowered than even Lucy. If I'm being honest, Mewtwo's probably one of the only telekinetic beings that'd be able to realistically put up a fight against Accelerator. Damn it. Really? Magneto doesn't have telekinetic powers. He has magnesis. It's not the same thing. He just has he just has control over magnetism. Misaka from the Assert Magical Index series has that same ability. She has magnetism powers and has control over things like metal. Yes, Scarlet Witch is one of the most powerful telekinetics in fiction. 
I don't know if she's the most powerful, because you also have people like Mewtwo and Accelerator who are just absurdly broken. Come on! Oh my god, I'm sick of doing the same thing over and over again. Like, this wouldn't be so bad if I didn't have to keep doing the same thing over and over again. I'm not even gonna bother killing him. No. Ah, that freaking wind keeps getting in my way. Ah, get away from me. Screw this. I don't know why people always think that mirror matchups are the way to go. This would be the equivalent if Deadliest Warrior had King Leonidas go up against a Spartan or something like that. It's like, what's the point?
die. Yep, one of the reasons why I bought it was because I really liked the art style. It's a good looking game. Games like this are evidence that good, that good graphics don't mean jack. All you need is just a not, all you need is just a good art style. Like you don't need to have all these fancy systems. To create these really high-end graphics that end up just in that end up just blowing up any PC that tries to run it. Finally, a checkpoint.
I'm not even going to dignify that one with a response, Jeremy. Oops, I did not mean to do that. What the heck? Well, that guy wasn't very bright. Oh, not more hunch, not more jumping enemies. Jumping enemies and retro side scrollers like this are the worst. Damn it, I can't reach him. Ow. Uh. Of course. No, same universe matchups are not the same as a mirror matchup. That's just a same universe matchup. And those are typically quite pointless. Damn, the gore in this game isn't half bad. Ow. I hate those things. Oh yeah, that's real fair. Oh come on, the lava doesn't hurt her? How is that fair? I mean, the only time I can somewhat... Ah, damn it! Uh, that's what I get for looking at the chat. 
The only time in which I can kind of understand same universe matchups is if it's a universe like Fate or something like that. I can somewhat understand them. But even then, I don't recommend same universe matchups unless it's under specific circumstances. Because the universe in question will usually make it pretty clear who is the strongest. Like, for example, in the Ninja Turtle franchise, they always made it quite clear who the strongest turtle was. So technically doing that battle royale was kind of pointless. Like every time. Oh my god. Uh Urza will get annihilated. Do you know how powerful the Persona universe is? Urza would get her shit kicked in. She would get curb stomped. Urza is nowhere near as powerful as people think that she is. That's what happens when you don't search compatibility before coming up with a matchup. All you're doing is sending Urza to her death. Now granted, I don't give a flying crap because Urza is a piece of trash. All the fairy tale characters deserve to be sent to their death. But looking at it from a non-biased perspective, putting Urza against a Persona character is irresponsible. Because she's just going to get slaughtered, and you're going to piss off the fans. And for some reason... Fairy tale fans have a bad habit of sending their favorite fairy tale character to an inevitable grave. I don't know why they do that. Maybe they secretly hate fairy tale as much as the rest of us. I don't know. Really? Uh, these jumping enemies are the worst. They're such a nuisance. Get away from me. Ugh.
Did I say that Persona characters have the same capabilities? No, I just said Persona characters are very, are extremely overpowered. They're as strong as Final Fantasy characters at times. The only way in which fairy tale fans have successfully gotten fairy tale characters at ridiculously high levels is by taking feats or powers out of context or taking them literally. Oh yeah, that's real frickin' fair. Why do I even bother with this game? I didn't answer your question because you said Michigan. It's not Michigan. That's the name of a state and a tire company. It's Missionary, not Michigan. I don't know where you got that from. Yeah, my argument is not necessarily that there aren't certain characters that fairy tale characters could potentially fight in the Persona universe, but that the Persona universe is so overpowered, odds are that they're going to get annihilated, unless under specific circumstances. It'd be the same as trying to put the fairy tale characters against Final Fantasy characters. Even the weakest of Final Fantasy characters can wield some of the most powerful magic in the universe. For example, spells like Meteor and Ultima, which are strong enough to destroy planets, yeah, even the weakest Final Fantasy characters can use that magic. Even children in the Final Fantasy universe can casually wield that powerful level of magic. Rydia from Final Fantasy IV, a literal child, can wield Ultima, Earthquake, Tornado and Meteor, some of the most powerful magic in the entire series. And and here's the thing, even fairy tale fans don't screw around with the Final Fantasy universe. Even they know how much of a bad idea that is. I hate these things. Ugh. Why do you have to take so long climbing up the edge, you jack? Really? Really? Stop with these jumping enemies. They are so cheap.
First off, in what realities does Sakura versus Tifa make any sense? And don't say because they both punch shit because that's dumb. You're using death battle logic. Stop. Number two, Tifa would absolutely annihilate Sakura. Have you forgotten that Tifa can tank Supernova? A, a, an attack that can end solar systems? Also, Tifa can also wield some of the most powerful magic in the Final Fantasy universe. Yeah, the meteor spell that Madara used, that was sissy crap compared to Meteor from Final Fantasy. Which is confirmed to be able to destroy entire planets. That is a canon confirmation. And you don't even have to be a particularly strong magic user to even you to even destroy a planet with Meteor. The Meteor spell alone is that powerful. No, I will lowball Madara because not only did he get killed by Zetsu, he's not even stronger than Kaguya, who is confirmed at planet level. Also, it's not a lowball of Madara to say that the Meteor spell in Final Fantasy is stronger than his Chicken Wuss Meteor attack. And again, please be remind, please allow me to remind you that Madara was killed by Zetsu. Any street cred he may have had went right out the door when that happened.
Dang it. Ooh, that's exactly how I feel about that enemy. Oh, come on, I still get hit with it anyway? Whatever.
Oh, now I'm able to reach him. Really? 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 Thank you. Really? Really? Oh my god, okay, screw you then, game. I'm just gonna run right past you. I don't have to fight your dumb enemies. So frustrating. Huh, that's weird. The chat just randomly froze for a bit. I thought you guys weren't talking, and then all of a sudden I see all the chats. What the heck just happened? Huh, weird.
Then again, YouTube's broken, so I shouldn't really be surprised. For a second, I thought the chat just died. Same here. I was just looking at the chat. I saw that no one was responding. And then all of a sudden, all the responses just came out of nowhere. New chapter is up. Sweet. I don't know if the fact, I don't know if the chat freezed or just it was lagging behind or what. But for, I was genuinely about to stop the, the stream because I thought the chat died. And then all of a sudden I come back and then I see like five or six messages. I'm like, what the hell just happened? I both love and hate that dash attack. It's very useful, but I swear it, it never works when I need it to. I hate having a time it just perfect. Like the fact that I almost got killed by that one enemy because I accidentally dashed into her stupid weapon is dumb. She wasn't even swinging it. But just merely being touched by the weapon is enough to injure me. Really? Oh, so I can reach these guys a little bit. Well, at least I got him out of the way. Come on. Who?
I got an idea. How about Amy Rose versus a rapist? There you go. There's your matchup. Ugh, again, that dash attack never wants to work when I need it to. with this guy. I just want to get to the next checkpoint. Yeah, I've had hot tamales. I know, I just decided to send it to you just to be on the safe side. But yeah, there's a new chapter up and now we're into volume 5. So about 4 volumes left, I guess we're more than f halfway through finally. I would say let's just read the newest, the new chapters together and catch you up, sis. But I don't know if reading that manga will get me and will get me demonetized or not. Haven't heard that song. Freaking dash attack. Again, only ever works when it feels like it. Hate those things. Really? All that just for a gate I can't get through? Oh great, there's one of those guys down there. I'm done. I am fucking done. <laughs> You're quitting? Yes. That Gur should have died, and I'm not going through all that again.
And I hate that I can't properly convey how much this game is ticking me off without getting demonetized. I'm going to start taking steps to making my own website. Where I can just post all my videos and streams there. Then I can say whatever I want without fear of being demonetized. pisses me off is I'm the same guy who beat Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Ninja Gaiden, Castlevania, Castlevania 3, but I can't beat this frickin' game. Yes, I own Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and I beat it, too. And I did so without a game genie. I bought this game for more than just it looks pretty. I bought the game because it's more retro. And I love retro games. That might actually be an interesting idea. Hmm, I might have to get back on that one. I have not decided yet. I mean, I'm definitely very frustrated with this game, though.
How long has the stream even been going for? And, uh, okay, so about three hours. Hmm. Let's see here. What else could I possibly do? Hard to say because right now only garbage has been coming out so far, like The Last of Us 2. What the hell? Imagine these two titans from two most hated games fighting against each other. Yeah, how about no? Some people, I swear. A Walmart in North Las Vegas has come under fire for what many local shoppers are calling a racist display in its store. The location, which was blah blah blah, hung clothing from the ceiling with neon green chains while the Walmart Location insisted it was a failed marketing attempt to sell more clothes. Many shoppers felt that the I swear people will perceive anything as racist these days. Ain't nobody trying to lynch anyone anymore. Jeez. Last of Us 1 is barely decent. 
It's one of the most mediocre zombie games ever, but for some reason people just freaked out over it. Even though you want to know how bad The Last of Us 1 story is, they stole plot points from the Resident Evil movies. Yes, I said the Resident Evil movies. Not the game, the movies. And yet people want to say that The Last of Us 1 is a masterpiece. No, it's not. The fact that The Last of Us 2 sucked so much should tell you something about the storytelling. I.e. the storytelling was never good. For some reason the first Last of Us blew up for reasons I can't possibly imagine. After, zo after all the zombie games coming out, I'm surprised it wasn't thrown into a wood chipper with all the other mediocre zombie games that came out around that time. It is. As pointed out by the king himself, Dishonored Wolf, if you've seen any episode of The Walking Dead, then you know the story of The Last of Us. There's nothing interesting about it. It's so generic. It's so cliche. It has no interesting twists and turns at all. And its nihilistic storytelling just makes you not care because everything is... Everything is screwed up anyway, so why should you bother get, having any kind of hope in the series? I mean, even the guy who made The Last of Us straight up said, The Last of Us is not meant to be fun. So there you have it. The Last of Us is not meant to be fun. Stop praising The Last of Us. They're both garbage. They're nothing more than mediocre zombie games with trash stories. Sure, the gameplay might be decent, but it, when it's in service to a mostly linear garbage story, then what does it even matter? I mean, it's like playing Final Fantasy XIII. Why would you do that to yourself? That's because people in the gaming industry care more about agendas than making good games, and look how that turns out. Truth be told, I don't know what I ever saw on PlayStation. Yeah, they had some good games, but that's just because they had a decent third-party support in the PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 era. Sony as a whole is just an incredibly incompetent company. How they've managed to last this long is beyond me.
No, Death Battle, I'm not going to get hyped. No, I'm not going to get hyped about the next Death Battle. It's nothing more than a glorified advertisement for another garbage Rooster Teeth show. We've seen this before with Yang versus Tifa and Carolina versus the Meta. How can you possibly get hyped for this? Yeah, that's the thing. I don't know why they waste Death Battle's time making these terrible advertisements for their garbage shows when not once have they ever tempted me to watch Ruby or Red vs. Blue. When I first saw the Meta vs. Carolina, I didn't even know those characters were from Red vs. Blue. I just thought they were some Halo characters I've never heard of. I didn't know they were, they were for a garbage Rooster Teeth show. It's some kind of parody comedy series or something like that. It's basically in the same vein as Sonic for Hire, if you remember that old show that Rooster Teeth did. Except Sonic for Hire was actually funny sometimes. However, though, Rooster Teeth does go for the most obvious humor. I mean, when it came to making fun of Link in their Sonic for Hire series, the best they could come up with was making Link flamboyantly gay. Wow, Rooster Teeth, aren't you so frickin' clever? No one's ever thought of that joke before. It's not even just the fact that they made Link gay. No, they make Link offensively flamboyantly gay. You know, like what shows like South Park and Family Guy got ruthlessly criticized for. Because I've seen Rooster Teeth shows before. I've watched Sonic for Hire. They're decent, mindless entertainment at best. Like, you can sit down and watch something like Sonic for Hire and just enjoy some of the stupid humor, I guess. But the only reason why you even give a damn is because you're seeing a bunch of characters from video games that you like. I mean, every once in a while they make a decent joke, like making Kirby a psychopath that likes killing for the sake of killing. I mean, that's kind of hilarious. I guess.
You still streaming? Yeah. The reason why Rooster Teeth even gets away with Red versus Blue is because of a, is because of satire and parody laws. Yeah, Rooster Teeth is so unoriginal, they stole a joke from Drawn Together. And even then, the stupid Link is Gay joke was not good in Drawn Together either. Assuming it was Chad James' idea, then that's everything you need to know about that show's quality. Maybe they should stop doing his ideas. Or better yet, maybe you should stop doing ideas based on his daughter. Because we ended up with Pinkie Pie versus Deadpool because of his daughter. Thanks for that one, Chad. How about you rename yourself to Virgin, you dick? Yes. Like I said, I watched the Death Battle podcast. It's one of the reasons why I laugh at people when they tell me I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to Death Battle. Trust me, there's a reason why I can predict Death Battle's stupidity before it even happens. Chad James straight up admitted the reason why we got Pinkie Pie vs. Deadpool was because of his daughter. Because his daughter is a My Little Pony fan. Shock of all shock. Like, maybe he should stop coming up with ideas. Or at least, maybe don't base ideas on what your daughter wants, because she doesn't necessarily know what makes a good versus matchup and what doesn't. I mean, when, it, when I was a kid, I came up with all kinds of stupid ideas that I thought were cool back then. But in hindsight, are just plain stupid. Ru the reason Ruby is far worse because Ruby looks like a show that hasn't even been finished. Seriously, that's what Ruby looks like. That's why I'm offended when people say they think Ruby is good. It's an insult to animation. It's just barely a step above Rhapsody Street Kids, which is a animation famous for being completely unfinished. That's what Ruby looks like. It looks like stiff unfinished 3D animation. It looks like it looks like garbage that people would put together while screwing around with MMD. But even then, I've seen MMD animations that look better than Ruby. Ruby is just painful to look at. I don't know how anyone makes themselves suffer through that show. It looks so freaking terrible. The characters move so stiff and unnaturally. And many of their characters were created through just putting together random crap in MMD. 
There was no artistic integrity when they were making their characters. They were just like, let's make some characters that vaguely, and I mean vaguely, resemble fairy tale characters and completely fail. Brilliant. Let this be a lesson to you, dear viewers. Politicians are nothing more than paid actors. They're the equivalent of WWE superstars. I just read about this thing where Joe Biden is going back on his campaign promise to make marijuana legal. It's almost as if politicians don't actually mean the things that they say. They just say whatever it is that they think will get them that they think will lead to you electing them. They just say what you want to hear. You you honest to god have to be genuinely stupid to think a politician is going to ever do anything they say. This is why I laugh at people that say Biden is a better candidate than Trump. No, sweetheart. They're both terrible. There is no lesser of two evils here. There never has been a lesser of two evils. Like, in what messed up reality does it make any sense that we have to vote for a lesser of two evils. How about we don't vote evil people into office at all? How about that? There's a revolutionary concept for you. Stop letting evil people run for office. Just put them in prison where they belong. Like, I, I don't understand our country. In this country, people get thrown into prison for victimless crimes like owning drugs. Meanwhile, we take actual psychopathic criminals and elect them to rule over us. What sense does that make? How backwards is that logic? What the heck? What is a nomadic cartoonist?
I always tell people, all politicians are scumbag. Here's what I always tell people. The, I hate all politicians equally. I think they're equally scum. Sure, there are technically some politicians that are worse than others, but that doesn't mean that other politicians are good. Just because you tell me Biden isn't as bad as Hillary or something like that, that doesn't mean I'm going to vote for them on that premise. How about we stop voting for psychopaths? I gotta get better at reading Japanese. It's written. Sakura completely slaughters Chun Li. That's not even a fair matchup. See, this is what happens when you think with basic logic like, well, they both punch crap or they're both ninjas or martial artists. You gotta do more than that. Like, I do not know what else to do for this stream. I wish I could just watch some watch like some movies or some anime with my fans but that wouldn't go over well because that would be some Susie Lou crap and then I'd get my channel struck down
Okay, what the heck? Leatherface versus Ghostface makes no sense. Just the name alone makes me want to punch holes and stuff. Uh, yeah, hate not being able to curse. You suck, YouTube. Not even on live streams now? Well, not unless I want to get demonetized. Oh, I, I thought you said before live streams were safe. I know, I can, get I can get those demonetized too. I mean, people will still be able to donate super chats, but if I want to try to get ads on it, yeah, it'll get demonetized if I curse too much, which is just stupid. Robber. He's been in my Discord posting dumb ideas for a long time. And that matchup just makes no sense under any under any circumstances. Once again, Ghostface is from a super meta satire of the horror franchise. What sense does it make for Leatherface to fight him? And even then, Leatherface is not as strong as you might think. I mean, he once got easily manipulated by a radio show host. And he lost a chainsaw duel to a random sheriff. Like, Leatherface really isn't all that strong. Like, he, he is notorious for constantly getting into chases with women... And they always seem to outrun him. Every single time. Like, no joke. Like, almost every final girl that has ever existed in the Texas Chainsaw franchise gets into a chase with him, and then they always outrun him. Not to mention, Leatherface isn't very smart either. In fact, he's actually quite well known for basically being slow. I mean, yeah, he's got a chainsaw. I guess he may, he has a little bit of psychopath strength, but that's about it. Leatherface isn't all that strong. Put Leatherface up against Michael Myers, Jason, or Freddy. He'd get his ass handed to him.
Why do I have to get My Hero Academia beat Ruby? What does that even mean? Why do you have the same last name as my younger siblings? Before anyone asks, no, that's not my last name. I don't have the same last name as my younger siblings. Ruby is supposed to be a modern take on fairy tales or some nonsense like that. That's what fan war tells me. I honestly think that's a stretch. I think they just said that their characters have connections between fairy tale characters like Red Riding Hood and Snow White, and the fans just ran with that to try to make it look like it has some kind of clever meaning or something like that when it's just mindless crap. Hey, don't you run away from me. Get over here. Come here. Even if they did have similarities, as I've proven again, time and time again, similarities do not make a matchup. Do we have to go over this again? Like, there's a reason why I made that video. I made it to prove a point. Was that point not clear enough? Do I need to make an entire series of bait death battles that are obviously a terrible idea, but fit the qualifications of people that think that similarities and connections is all it takes to have a good matchup. I'll gladly make more of those. Maybe I didn't make the point clear enough with Glenn versus Rin. Like, I don't know what it's going to take for me to get the point across to some of these people that come up with all these terrible ideas.
No, I do not have a My Hero Academia character that I like. I haven't even seen the series. Like, if I make joke death battles, it's gonna be to poke fun at all the terrible ideas I see in the community. Like I said, if Cartoon Fight Club, Fan War, or Death Battle is dumb enough to take that bait, then I'm going to laugh so hard. And the funny part is, technically... You could put Rin in a death battle if you really wanted to, because she has gotten violent with people, and if you've read the manga, there was a chat, there was a, I guess you'd call it like a gag chapter or something, where Rin and her friends, Mimi and Kuro, randomly turn into magical girls, and they beat up a child molester. So... Technically, in a weird way, Rin does technically have power. I mean, I don't know if you could calculate it, but she technically has some. And she has gotten violent with people on a couple of occasions. Hard to say, that's what me and my animator have been trying to figure out. When is that going to get done? We keep running into all kinds of issues. This would be so much more easier if I had a team of animators as opposed to just one guy. What the heck is Ortiz your niece last name? What the heck? One thing I am tempted to do is to take one of the characters from U12 and find some way to put them in a death battle matchup just to screw with people.
No, that's just a website I was checking out. Watashiya, the writer of one of my all-time favorite manga, uh, had a link to that website, so I was curious to see what it was. Apparently she posts a lot of illustrations from the manga she's written on there. Truth be told, I don't think they'd be able to get away with doing a battle royale from Monster Musume. Because they care a great deal about their ads, and they wouldn't do anything that would make advertisers pull out. No pun intended. So yeah, it seems highly unlikely they would ever do that. Even if they wanted to, they likely wouldn't. It's Monster Musume. It's fetish bait, so it's not worth it. Fetish bait is never worth it. I once made some videos to spite YouTube, and then I got a community guideline strike. Probably not going to be trying that again. What reality does Ghost Boy versus does Damn it. The matchup is so stupid it's actually making me retarded. In what reality does Hellboy versus Ghost Rider make any sense? Okay, they're both from hell. Who gives a shit? Like, do people really not understand how overpowered the Ghost Rider is? The Ghost Rider is broken beyond repair. I mean, the Ghost Rider can resist attacks from Doctor Frickin' Strange, one of the most powerful beings in the Marvel Universe. Even Doctor Strange himself described the Rider's power as boundless. You gotta stop throwing people at the Ghost Rider just because, oh, they're both from hell, because that makes sense somehow. Makes about as much sense as that guy on Twitter that said, Have Rius Grimmery fight the Doom Slayer. What sense does that make? Yeah, put a, put a demon against someone who's notorious for not only killing demons, but making all of hell terrified of him. Yeah, that makes sense.
Ghost Rider would go into the Naruto universe and he would just he would start one-shotting people. It would be like that scene from Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance where he just shoves a guy and they get casually burned out of existence. Or when people start getting hit once by Ghost Rider's chain and then they get burned out of existence. That would be the Naruto universe trying to fight Ghost Rider. It would be embarrassing. Ghost Rider can literally just shove you and you'll just get burned out of existence. Good luck. Dante vs. Hellboy doesn't make any sense either. Stop trying. Ghost Rider's power is serious business. If, if you are going to put someone against the Ghost Rider, they better be damn powerful. You know why I put Simon Belmont against the Ghost Rider? Because he's one of the only people out there that would conceivably have a chance against him. Everyone always wants to talk about Hellboy, Dante, or Spawn. Guess what? None of them would have a chance against the Ghost Rider. He would eat them for breakfast. Literally, he would eat them for breakfast. They would be nothing to him. Ghost Rider spits on people like that. You need someone who's damn powerful, but more than that, you need someone who's not only strong enough to fight the Ghost Rider, but actually has the abilities or gear necessary to counter his broken hack abilities. When you're up against a being that can literally burn you out of existence, you need to have some serious gear and power, which thankfully Simon Belmont and the other members of his family have. They actually have abilities and gear that would actually give them a chance against the Rider. Now, whether or not it would be enough for Simon to defeat the Ghost Rider, you'll have to wait and find out. But I can tell you this, Simon Belmont is one of the only characters out there that would conceivably have a chance at possibly being able to defeat the Rider. Keep in mind, even the weakest Ghost Riders are at least multiversal. Don't even get me started on Cosmic Ghost Rider. And what you need to keep in mind is, no ma is regardless of what you see in my episode of Blood Royale, keep in mind I'm not even using the strongest Ghost Rider, even though I probably should be. I'm only going to be using the Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider. Although, to make it fair, I'm not using the strongest member of the Belmont family either. I probably should be doing Julius Belmont versus, versus Cosmic Ghost Rider. Maybe, depending on how that goes, I'll make that happen. But I'm just doing Johnny Blaze versus Simon Belmont. Because if I did Cosmic Ghost Rider versus Julius Belmont, that would get messy real quickly.
And in case you doubt Simon Belmont's abilities, let me tell you this. Simon Belmont's signature weapon, his whip, yeah, that's not an ordinary whip. That thing can straight up nullify healing factors. So maybe think twice before you decide to be like Kevin and Fishboy and say that and say that Simon Belmont versus Ghost Rider makes no sense. That whip that Simon Belmont carries around, it's not just your average ordinary whip. It is a very powerful family heirloom. There's a reason why the, be the re there's a reason why the vampire killer is passed down from each generation of Belmonts. Without it, they would barely even be able to go up against some of the against some of the beasts that they go up against, let alone Dracula, who is notorious in the Castlevania series for being pretty much unkillable. And that's just his whip. Simon Belmont has all kinds of other insanely overpowered abilities and or weapons. And if you're still not convinced on how interesting this matchup really is and how Simon Belmont truly is one of the only people that can truly fight the Ghost Rider in a legit fight without any bullcrap, one of the members of my research team told me something very interesting. S Simon Belmont can resist the penance stare. Let that sink in. Simon Belmont can resist the penance stare. The thing that was so powerful, not even Lobo could resist it. Again, think twice before you trash Simon or any of his family members. They are insanely overpowered. The Castlevania universe is not a universe to be fucked with. The Castlevania universe is serious damn business. Truth be told, it wouldn't make for a very interesting comic because Ghost Rider would just go in there, kill pretty much everyone in one hit, they would struggle in vain, and then he would just take off. And yes, Ghost Rider has the power to casually one-shot everyone in the Naruto universe. It wouldn't even, he wouldn't even break a sweat. Korra in the Avatar stage wouldn't do jack against the Ghost Rider. Like, here's the thing. Korra wields fire. The Ghost Rider wields hellfire. You know, that fire that is notorious for not being able to be put out. Also, problem with that genius... The Ghost Rider is a spirit. Bending doesn't work on spirits in the Avatar universe. Her bending would be useless. Did you just forget that people in the Avatar universe can't use their bending on spirits or in the spirit world because it doesn't work on them? Also, Korra isn't even that powerful anyway. Like, as far as Mary Sue's go, Korra has to be one of the weakest. 
In fact, if I ever made a ranker video based on the most overpowered Mary Sue, based on the based on Mary Sue's ranked from like strongest to weakest, Cora wouldn't be very high up on that list. She's pathetic. Kirito is a more powerful Mary Sue. Put that into perspective. A loser that plays video games is more powerful than Korra. I love how people always try to find some way to beat the Ghost Rider and then they make themselves look like a fool trying. I don't know where you get that from. My character looks nothing like Princess Bubblegum. Not sure where you're getting that from. There are a small there are a small handful of universes that could fight the Ghost Rider, and there are some characters within the Final Fantasy universe that could take on the Ghost Rider. But it would only be some of the most powerful characters. Like Ultimecia, X Death, Cloud of Darkness, really overpowered characters like that. I would say lightning, but lightning might be pushing it a bit. Her best feat was taking down Buna Velza, who's universal. That's about it. Uh, no, Kid Boo could not beat Ghost Rider. That wouldn't go well for him at all. I hate having to repeat myself, contrary to what some people like to say. But, Ghost Rider is far more powerful than that. Doctor Strange himself described the writer's power as boundless. Even Strange himself can't stop the Ghost Rider. And Doctor Strange, keep in mind, his main bad guy is Dormammu. A guy that literally eats entire dimensions and universes. Y'all talk about... Um, Galactus, who eats entire planets, that's nothing compared to Dormammu, who literally eats dimensions for breakfast. Dude is a high-complex, multiversal threat. And that's who Doctor Strange regularly battles against. 
And even he can't defeat the Ghost Rider. Yeah, Boo absolutely can die. Just because he has a really strong healing factor doesn't mean he's completely invincible. He was killed. Also, it doesn't matter if Boo can't die or not. Ghost Rider can erase you from existence. What, what part of Ghost Rider can literally burn you out of existence wasn't understood. It doesn't matter if you can die or not. The Ghost Rider could literally just erase you from existence. And guess what? Existence erasure nullifies any and all immortality hacks. Every single one of them. If you can wipe the person from existence, it doesn't matter if they have some kind of immortality. Like That's like me saying that Aizen from Bleach is immortal, so therefore he can defeat the Ghost Rider because Aizen technically can't die. What kind of backwards logic is that? If the, if the character can erase you from existence, it doesn't matter if you can't die or not. I still don't like the insinuation that my character looks like Princess Bubblegum. Like, I wouldn't even want to be associated with that creepy show. I checked out of it at Adventure Time when I heard about the creepy episode where Princess Bubblegum was sniffing Vampire Princess or whatever her name is. She was sniffing her shirt, which was like a blatant reference to panty sniffing. Yeah, that's when I just am like, nope, I'm done. Yes, that actually happened, by the way. And rumors told me that they actually had Bubblegum Princess engage in a lesbian relationship with Vampire Princess. I'm done. I will never watch Adventure Time ever again. Like, they just completely jumped the shark, like... Did they just completely forget that they were making a show that's technically supposed to be geared towards kids? Or did they think that they were making frickin' an episode of Family Guy? That scene from... That scene I described with them sniffing each other's clothes, that wouldn't be out of place in, a, in an episode of Family Guy. To quote the ABGN, what were they thinking? Oh, hey, hey, hey. You're a brat. Get over here. All right, see you later, CJ. Most likely in the Discord, I presume.
Um, here's the vast difference between the two. Kodoma no Jikin is not made for kids. There's a vast difference there. Kodoma no Jikin is the equivalent of something like South Park. or It's not trying to be for kids, nor does it advertise itself as such. Also, I am notorious for not being very fond of lesbian characters in any works of fiction. I'm, like, well known for that. Even in Kodoma no Jiken, I didn't like the lesbian character in Kodoma no Jiken. I found her extremely frustrating. I appreciate how well written her character was, but she still pisses me off because she's a frustrating character to have to deal with. However, I begrudgingly tolerate her like I tolerate other lesbian characters. But that's about as far as it ever goes. Uh, no. Censorship is not acceptable. I'm not saying censor Adventure Time. I'm just saying I don't watch it. That's all. All I said was, uh, that's what personally made me check out of Adventure Time. That's it. I, I, I'm not saying kids can't watch Adventure Time. They absolutely can. I'm just saying that's what made me personally stop watching. You know? I mean, that, that scene just seemed incredibly out of place to me. Like, you have this show that's intended to be geared towards kids, and then you put a scene in it... That wouldn't be very far out of place in a more adult show like Family Guy, South Park, or Kodoma no Jiken. It was just extremely jarring. I have no clue what they were going for with that scene. I believe that kids can watch whatever the hell they want. If, if a child ends up watching a TV show that they're not supposed to watch, then as far as I'm concerned... Bad parenting. Because there was plenty of shows I technically shouldn't have been allowed to watch when I was a kid, but my mother didn't exactly stop me from doing so. Though she probably should have. In fact, I had a very weird mother. My mother blocked me from watching Dragon Ball Z and Pokemon, but she didn't stop me from watching Family Guy, South Park, or any horror movie. I'm not exactly sure what her thought process was on that one. Not sure how it's Rebecca Sugar's fault, unless she was somehow involved in the writing of that episode. And if that was the case, well, that's what you get for hiring a creepy weirdo like Rebecca Sugar to write your crap for you. You're just going to end up with a bunch of creepy nonsense. Yes, to put it simply, my mom had very odd standards. She would let me play Resident Evil, God of War. She'd let me watch her play Silent Hill or Clock Tower. She wouldn't stop me from watching South Park, Family Guy, or anything like that. But she did literally use parental locks to stop me from watching Pokemon and Dragon Ball Z. Well then, let this be a lesson to kids everywhere. Don't let Rebecca Sugar write anything for you. Because Rebecca Sugar, re remember, Rebecca Sugar is that woman that made, that made pornographic artwork of the characters from Ed, Ed, and Eddie doing it. Let that sink in. And then remember that this girl is trying to write TV shows to educate your children. And then people wonder why I hate Steven Universe. Why Scott Pilgrim versus Kyoko from River City Girls? I'm not sure what the thought process is on that one.
Oh, yeah. If you haven't heard about that story, Rebecca Sugar uh, legit drew pornographic artwork of the Ed, Ed, and Eddie characters doing it. Gay pornographic artwork. And yes, this artwork is on the internet. And she's the same girl who made Steven Universe. Funny enough, I found a version of River City Girls that was advertising the River City Girls on Nintendo Switch, but it was a pornographic version of River City Girls. Not even joking. I don't know if that was like the actual official demo, or if it's just some fan-made game that someone made just to promote the actual game. <laughs> Oh, and in case you're ever subscribed to Phantom Strider or think he's a pretty good source to use for what is good and what isn't good, uh, need I remind you that Phantom Strider thinks that Steven Universe is the greatest modern cartoon of all time. Yeah. But, notoriously, this guy likes to shit on things like Elfin Lied. You know, actual good television shows. His standards makes no sense to me. Steven Universe, good. Ed, Ed, and Eddie, not good. Steven Universe, good. Elf and Lead, not good. In fact, maybe I should make a response video to his god-awful list of the greatest modern cartoons of all time because it is just terrible. Never mind the fact that Steven Universe is on there, but this guy puts Rick, this guy puts Rick and Morty on there and frickin' Legend of Korra. What the actual sh What the actual hell? Legend of Korra? Are you kidding me? And of course, he's, he cites the same terrible arguments that Legend of Korra fans use and have been regularly debunked by longtime Avatar fans like me and ER Senpai. No, Legend of Korra is not more dark and mature than the original Avatar. This is a lie. I don't know how many times this lie has to be debunked. If you guys want to see it, I'll show it to you guys, and maybe I'll make a response video, but holy crap, this guy's video is terrible. It is hot, wretched. Let me see here. I used to be so, I, embarrassingly, I admit, I used to be subscribed to this guy. And don't worry, this guy has no connections with Phantom Enigma. I'm just going to sit here and listen to you. The only reason I even ever watched this guy was because I kind of liked his list of the worst cartoons, which admittedly isn't half bad. Freaking fanboy. Just. I, I'm not even gonna do it. 
I, I just I can't with Steven Universe fans. I I can't. They give me a headache. As they try to justify their mediocre garbage, and that's me being that's me being nice to Steven Universe. Calling it mediocre garbage is too generous. Oh yeah, I remember this video. Top 5 anime I hate that everyone else likes. Featuring Robin from Anime America. Yeah, I'm sure that went well for him. Not worst modern cartoons. Well, at least he put Teen Titans Go on there. At least it's something, I guess. Honestly, Mysterious Mr. Enter absolutely one-shots Phantom Strider. And Mysterious Mr. Enter is pretty infamous in the cartoon community, but I trust Mysterious Mr. Enter over this guy any day. No, they're not, because Nickelodeon is still going down the crapper. One cartoon doesn't mean Nickelodeon is back, you jackhat. If Nickelodeon truly wanted to show that they actually gave a crap about being Nickelodeon again, they would bring back Invader Zim. But odds are Nickelodeon wouldn't do that because that would actually make sense. It's a perfect example of how something brilliant can be made from the simplest of setups. And for some reason... Yes, trust me, I'm well aware of all the incest nonsense in the Loud House fandom. I've been on Daijinshi websites. Believe me, I'm well aware. Which is why I avoid the Loud House fandom, because it's creepy, just like the Steven Universe fandom. Yep, now you see why this list is so bad. Loud House is on par with Invader Zim. Invader Zim is one of the greatest cartoons of all time, rivaled only by some of the other cartoon greats, like Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Right off the top of my head, the only thing I could think of that could conceivably rival Invader Zim is Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. I mean, maybe Courage the Cowardly Dog could also be decent competition for Invader Zim. I mean, Courage the Cowardly Dog is also pretty good. It's difficult to think of cartoons that are right up there with Invader Zim. Invader Zim is a god-tier cartoon. If Invader Zim was like an opponent in the Versus universe, and he was going up against other cartoons, Invader Zim would be slapping them all like they're nothing. It would be, a cur it would be curb stomp after curb stomp, and then you'd get an occasional good matchup, like maybe against Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. And keep in mind, this is only number 10. The list gets worse as it's go along. To think people say that my arguments are trash. Uh, ha -ha, no. And I hope you delete your YouTube channel. Nickelodeon has trashed the garbage, and now it's back. 
Also, this dude really needs to avoid the anime community. Every time he talks anime, he pisses me off. Yeah, it kind of goes without saying, Samurai Jack could absolutely rival Invader Zim. Samurai Jack is another one of the all-time greats. What made Invader Zim so good was just how unique it was. There just wasn't really all that much out there like Invader Zim at the time. I mean, you had Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, you had Courage the Cowardly Dog, you, but it just wasn't quite like Invader Zim, you know? It was just had such a unique identity that other cartoons couldn't really rival, even at the time. I might have to re-watch Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy sometime. It's been so long since I've watched that. Hmm. I have no clue. I haven't seen Harvey Beaks. Okay, Steven Universe is garbage, and if you're talking about the power of the characters, Steven Universe characters slaughter Ruby characters, because Ruby characters are canon fodder. Avatar The Last Airbender is what I would consider a Samurai Jack-esque show, where... It's not quite cartoon, but it's not quite anime either. It's that special middle ground. It. And I just hate the raw simplicity of your of your critiques, Phantom. Shows like Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, Invader Zim, and Courage the Cowardly Dog was what led to my goth personality. Growing up with characters like Gaz and Mandy. I respect Easy Peasy for calling out this cartoon for the mediocre trash that it is. Like, I mean, I won't say that Rick and Morty is terrible, but it's not really spectacular either. I mean, there are some jokes I like in Rick and Morty, but I won't say it's like this amazing, fantastic show that everyone makes it out to be. I mean, let's be honest here. It's notoriously a it's notoriously a ripoff of 
freaking Back to the Future. It's basically Futurama meets Back to the Future. Honestly, I think I prefer Futurama over Rick and Morty. Futurama has given us far more iconic memes. Yeah, they realized it was too smart, so they said, let's make it dumb and make it trash. Oh wow, your show has... Just because your show has these concepts in it doesn't automatically make it more mature. I can't with this guy. <laughs> ER Senpai would like to know where you live, Phantom. It's not more adult, though. It has some of the most childish not... There is an airbender who has... Who farts. His airbending is him... The characters in Legend of Korra are trash. They're so poorly written. And when they're not poorly written, they're just bland, boring nobodies like Mako who has the audacity to have the same name as the guy who voiced General Iroh, possibly the greatest character in all of Avatar. Thank God I unsubscribed from this guy a long time ago. I just, I can't deal with this guy. Well, that's probably why many of Rick and Morty's fans are Redditors. Yeah, and I'm sorry, but you don't want to appeal to Reddit. Reddit is garbage. Yeah. As pointed out by my sister... Although Reddit has the best content of any social media, it has the most toxic people of any social media. Here's the thing. Reddit is the same website where they banned all trap artwork and memes because they think that it's a slur against transgenders and they infamously spit in the face of people who like traps or identify as traps and they ended up having to delete an entire anime reddit because the backlash they got was so intense that's what rick and morty is appealing to morons like that that think that trap is a slur and then have to delete an entire anime reddit when they get rightful backlash for it If the story isn't the best, why is it on this list? This is the top 10 list of the greatest modern cartoons of all time. Shouldn't the story be good? Because modern cartoons today are a travesty. They're so freaking bad. You do not know bad cartoons until you've watched Uncle Grandpa and frickin' Clarence, which I have done.
My name is Yevgeny Bokoyev. I hate Bokoyev. the main difference I've seen between cartoons oh, and now. Uh, is the cartoons that we were raised with were had a lot of like clever comedy in it. Whereas cartoons today, it's more of like, haha, ha, I have done XD humor. Well, also, back then, you're actually allowed to be creative and take risks. Yeah. Nowadays, you can't do that because of this current social climate. I checked out I checked out of this cartoon when I watched a bubble propose to a sentient Game Boy and Princess Bubblegum sniffing her shirt sniffing the shirt of another woman in a blatant reference to panty sniffing. That's when I had to check out. Yes, all of that happens. There's also a really creepy episode where Finn keeps making Flame Princess torture the Ice King for no reason other than he keeps having a wet dream. No joke, he has a wet dream about Flame Princess and in order to get the wet dream to come back, he keeps making her torture the Ice King who does nothing wrong in the entire episode. What? Like, that's like something modern Spongebob would do. You watch what you say about my boy, Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss was a huge part of my childhood. Um, let me see. I know this is an old video. Yeah, this was uploaded in 2016. If this was uploaded in 2020, I think I'd have to throw myself out over our balcony. Probably put this at number 11. Miraculous Ladybug. France has given us some interesting things over the years. French fries, existentialism, seductive romancing techniques, New Orleans. But so far, this is one of the strangest things I've seen from France. There is some great creativity in the designs of these cartoons. And the English dub is pretty good. But to be honest, it's aimed pretty specifically at a female demographic. But I do appreciate the innovation. What do you expect? It's aiming for the Maho Shoujo genre. I, I want to put a lot of emphasis on this. The fact that he put Amazing World of Gumball, one of the only genuinely good modern cartoons, in the honorable mentions, and put Steven Universe at number one, shows you how fucked this guy's opinion is. Amazing World of Gumball is genuinely one of the best modern cartoons of all time. It's so good, even I watched it. It's like Family Guy for kids, and even that's not a good, and even that's not the best description of it. Amazing World of Gumball is great. Their, their joke about social justice warriors is one of the funniest jokes I've seen in a cartoon in a long time. Like, that's how good Amazing World of Gumball is. It can actually talk about modern politics and not make you want to blow your brains out. Because they actually do it in a clever and funny way. Like, this is one of the only cartoons I would say in the modern era is genuinely good and on par with what you would have seen on old school Cartoon Network. This cartoon had one one thousandth of the budget of Batman vs Superman. 
the men, and it puts the movie to absolute shame. It's better paced, more interesting, appeals to I can't even remember why I used to subscribe to this guy. Yeah, I liked a couple of his videos, but he puts out more garbage than good stuff. Like, I know I'd be super late to the party if I made a response to him, but shoot, he might need it because this list is just terrible. I'd rather watch Man of Steel than your fucking channel, douchebag. The first season of Steven Universe doesn't have a plot. They don't have a plot until like episode 93 when they say there's this cluster and we're going to build a drill. And that's it. He's a spoiled, rotten brat and a godforsaken Mary Sue that never grows or develops. There is just this emotional energy to this content. Steven is the kind of kid who would come up to you and ask you if you have games on your phone and beg to play them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's literally an episode where, where it ends with Steven saying he always gets what he wants. Steven Universe is infamous for the fact that they sent storyboards to the animators without instructions, which led to all kinds of errors throughout the series because they couldn't be bothered to send frickin' instructions. Someone get Easy Peasy and ER and Mysterious Mr. Enter to kick this guy's ass. Yeah, Steven Universe is not all that good. I don't know where these Steven Universe fans get all this pretentious meaning and character development from. It's not there. I've watched Steven Universe. It's not freaking there. I remember when it first came out, I watched the first episode, and five minutes in, I left. I couldn't do it. I lasted a little bit longer. I watched about a handful of episodes, and then I gave up. It's just, it's so freaking bad. And the people who make it are terrible people. They are objectively awful people. Like, I know people will try to trash. I just, I can't. This list is an abomination, and the fact that it only has 3.5 dislikes is a problem. How? Why? Uh, just... Thinking about that guy just gives me a freaking migraine. I feel like there's a... I literally can feel a tumor growing in my brain. If I get cancer, I'm sending, I'm sending you my bill, Strider.
Oh yeah, that's another thing. Phantom Strider is notorious for saying he hates Ed, Ed, and Eddie, and he doesn't understand why people likes it. No joke. I'm speechless. He, yep, he genu he he genuinely doesn't get it. That's one of my favorite cartoons ever. Yeah, he made a list of like ten cartoons he doesn't like, but everyone else does like, and he put Ed, Ed, and Eddie on there. He did the same thing with anime as well. And it's funny. He loves the characters in Steven Universe, but notoriously hates on Light Yagami, an actual deep, complicated, multi-layered, morally gray character. And he says, oh, well, Light is arrogant. He's so arrogant. I'm like... You have a very one-note perspective on Light Yagami. You have the same moronic, nonsensical perspective that all the Light Yagami haters. It's all the same thing. Oh, well, he's arrogant. Well, he killed innocent people, something which is extremely debatable. Oh, but Steven Universe? Oh, those characters are amazing. They're so deep. Light Yagami would spit on any character from Steven Universe. He is a genuinely fascinating character. I, I think he really doesn't like cartoons that have clever and subtle humor. Because those are the best kind of cartoons. I, I wonder what would happen if I wonder what would happen if I showed him freaking Scott Pilgrim versus the world. He'd probably say, ah, oh, this movie is so boring and awkward and the main character is such an asshole how can i possibly like this movie right. he, he's he's one of the kind of people that like it when shows tell him when to laugh you know because the shows that he listed on there it makes it very apparent this is fancy yep. really phantom how desperate are you for views? Top 10 darkest Pokemon entries. Yeah, you're a little late to the party on that one, sweetheart. That's already been done so many times. Even freaking... Um, Dorkly has made so many skits making fun of how dark the Pokemon universe is. Or used to be. I mean, the, the Pokemon universe is still pretty dark. I mean, frickin' Mimikyu is like the equivalent of a Lovecraftian being. So in its Pokedex entry, it says that anyone who looks under Mimikyu's disguise will instantly die because what they will see will shock them so much they will die. Which is very similar to like Lovecraftian creatures where you can't even look at them or you'll just go completely insane. death all the time and have graveyards like Pokemon deaths mm -hmm. not faintings, deaths you know, they, they don't really do that anymore what I would do if I could they've even, even gone soft like even the rivals used to be jerks to you and they would get you riled up but now they're like friends yeah. that would bring sunshine and rainbows yeah, the reason why Paul is considered the best rival by many fans is because he was a complete asshole and treated Ash Ketchum like dirt. Yeah. That's what people like about him because it made you I don't I mean I can't imagine why you would ever root for Ash Ketchum, but Paul was such a good rival, he actually genuinely made you root for someone to see to see this guy be taken down a notch because nobody could defeat Paul. Yeah. One of the most one of the best Pokemon battles in the entire series is when Paul fights Brandon of the Brave Frontier because throughout the entire series Paul is this near unstoppable guy that no one can stop and he gets absolutely thrashed by Brandon and it's a very interesting character moment for Paul mm -hmm. like you just expect him to like just completely thrash Brandon but the exact opposite happens and it's such a fascinating battle see and they don't do that anymore there's no there are no turbulent characters in modern Pokemon games or shows. No turbulent characters. No negative ones. Yeah, like, I remember my favorite part of the fight between Paul and Brandon was when Paul got so frustrated 
by what was happening that he just stopped giving his Pokemon commands. He just gave up. It was so interesting. Like, this is why people said that Diamond and Pearl was when Pokemon was at its best, because Diamond and Pearl gave us some of the best characters in... Like, the characters in the Diamond and Pearl anime were incredible. Team Galactic were, are still the best villains in the entire series. Paul is the best rival. Dawn is one of the best girls, with the exception of maybe Iris. And it had some of the best character arcs. Even the comic relief character, Barry, is a ton of freaking fun. How can you not like Barry? He was, Barry was so popular, they tried to recreate him with Bianca in black and white, the anime, and it didn't work. But that's how popular even the comic relief like Barry was. And even Barry was an interesting character that had some decent character arcs. I liked him in the show. I didn't like him in the games, though. Yeah, he was a lot better in the anime than he was in the games. games. (laughs) Yeah, in the anime, he's far more lovable and funny. Yeah. Yeah, but Pokemon has kind of lost its darkness. They're kind of dull on that now. Mm-hmm. I remember what made Iris one of the most fascinating characters in all of the series was the fact that she legit fought a Pokemon with her bare hands and she wins. She beats the crap out of a Pokemon with her bare hands, gets it to respect her and follow her without the use of a Pokeball. That's how badass Iris is. Yeah, I love Scott Pilgrim versus the versus the world. That is a very funny movie. I was disappointed to hear that Scott Pilgrim versus the world bombed. Like that was an awesome movie. Like, there's just so many scenes in there that I love. The frickin' vegan police. The guy who go, who's, who grinds down a frickin' real steep rail and then blows up. Or possibly my favorite scene, which I've notoriously used in some of my videos before. The scene where Scott just jumps out a frickin' window and then goes back just to grab his coat. Yeah. You know what? He just left. <laughs> Even his top 10 anime that I that I hate that everyone else likes infuriates me. Even though it's just his uh, even though it's just quote his opinion. Did this guy put his microphone on frickin' office mode or something? What's up with the acoustics in his room? A true monster of anime. Huh, normally that does something. I'll try to it loud. I don't know why Anime America keeps doing crossovers with this guy. Of course his name is Josh. I don't pity Anime America much because Anime America has had some pretty dumb opinions. I might even go after Anime America one of these days. Oh, 
words that may infuriate me. And of course, since we're talking anime, we need the help of a true mutt. All words that really bother me. But I'll explain my reasons as best I can. After all, it's just my silly personal opinion. So take this list with a pinch of salt. Or several heapings of salt. Well, anyway... How about I bury you under a truck of salt like that scene from South Park? Haruhi Suzumi. Okay. Oh, dear. This dude just went after Haruhi Suzumina. I haven't even seen this anime yet, and even I know. Ouch. Just ouch. I, I still understand why people hate that one, but. I mean. I, I think it's awesome. But to me, the entire story felt so frustratingly muddled. I know that the fans will feel attacked when they see that. <laughs> fans feel attacked all the time. The po the the Amor shippers feel attacked every time I tell them their shipping is terrible. Mm-hmm. The series, they're constantly dressing poor Miku up in these ridiculously skimpy outfits. And what is she, 16? That's classified. Alright, so I do admit the fetish outfits are a little unnecessary, but welcome to anime. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with a little titillation, but all the scenes with Miku just seem so exploitative to me. The most memorable part of the first season for me wasn't any of the stupid perfect shots. It was the cab scene. When Kyo and Itsuki are in a cab talking about Haruhi's bizarre nature and the absurdity of the universe they live in, it's one of those timeless moments in anime for me that feels like a very real conversation between two people. The most memorable part for me was where Kion and Haruhi are standing at the train tracks and Haruhi explains how insignificant and worthless her actions feel within the unsurmountable scope of the universe. Yes, exactly. Those are the sort of moments that left an impact because they're not just cliched, scantily clad baseball games or school antics. They felt relatable and showed us real character fragility and development. But that's still a whole lot of good qualities about the anime. And what about the top-notch animation? The anime was made back in 2006, and even now, it still looks beautiful. Well, that's why this one's at the start of the list, because there are qualities I like about this show. But things like Haruhi's obnoxiousness and the over I already take down Death Battle fandom ideas. I have an entire stream dedicated to doing that. That's one thing I do remember from Haruhi Suzumina is it had one of the most famous dances. Yeah. Similar to that dance from the ending of Kodomo no Jiken. These morons are gonna get me copyright claimed, aren't they? <laughs> so much invested in the show, but more so in the oh, movie, yeah. which is weird. Well, to be honest, I actually have a few complaints about that show, too. Really? Well, after you then, I insist. Well, I didn't really get why every Duclonius had to be nude all of the time, and it <laughs> sometimes felt like it did seem purely to shock the audience. Uh, precisely. While I have no problem with violence in anime, it normally has to be for some artistic purpose or reason. To add to the story, message, or drama... Okay, so I guess if you have violence in anime, it must be for an artistic reason. So I guess all the violence in Dragon Ball Z is for artistic purposes, then. I guess Dragon Ball Z is Leonardo da Vinci. Decapitation, yeah. sexual abuse, and even children slowly killing a puppy. But it doesn't seem to be a strong artistic... Also, the violence is used for some kind of artistic purpose. It's not there just for... To be there. You've got to admit, though, the animation is, again, very crisp and smooth, even if it's mostly being used to blow people's head off in a fountain. 
Oh my god. He just used the same argument that the people who hate the Joker movie use. I'm not joking. This is the same argument that the anti-Joker people used. Everyone's so unrealistically mean to Arthur Fleck. It's so terrible. What the hell are you talking about? How are the people in Elfin Lead unrealistically cruel? Like, I've. I, do you know how many assholes I've dealt with that do act like people in Elfin Lied? Even the bullies. I mean, what the hell? You know what? I gotta get the EFAP podcast to go after this guy. Because they would just have a field goal ripping Strider to shreds. Yeah, there are, there are people out there that are that are terrible, just like the people in Elfin Lead. And the third anime I hate is that everyone else likes this. Sword Art Online. This is like the only one I agree with. Jesus help me! This anime. Dot Hack already did it and better. In fact, I argue Dot Hack Twilight did this artificial online world shit. This is like the only one that I agree with on Phantom Strider. Sword Art Online is trash. <laughs> oh god, Kawahara, you suck so fucking hard. He actually thought in 2022 we were going to have VR technology that would make us go into video game worlds. Learn how to sci-fi, you fucking hack. Sword Art Online is one of the worst anime you will ever watch. It is god-awful. If I try to explain why it's terrible, we're going to be here all night and I'm going to lose my mind. He's also a massive Gary Stew and a plank of frickin' wood. I loved MMORPGs as a teenager. In fact, I still log into my old Ragnarok Online account occasionally. But this just feels so pandering. Kirito feels like such a transparent otaku power fantasy that it almost feels manipulative. Sword Art Online isn't even good at being pandering to gamers. These poor kids have such rotten real life. In fact... If you are a gamer, Sword Art Online is offensive at times in how it portrays gamers. It, it has so many freaking gaming stereotypes. It would piss you off if you were a gamer. Lies that they have to fantasize about escaping to a fantasy world, meaning the people 
Here's the thing. Take a page out of Mega Man and Star Wars book. Oh, and Star and Star Wars book. Don't lock yourself into a year. Star Wars. In a galaxy far, far away. And they don't really give us a specific date. And the dates that they do give us are made up Star Wars dates. Or just take a page out of Mega Man X. Just say 2000 XX. Don't even be specific. A subscription fee. Okay, the main running joke throughout this episode is this video is going to get massively downvoted. And guess what? It wasn't. So once again, Robin, you fail. Maybe don't base one of your long running... Maybe don't base your joke on the fact that a video is going to get massively downvoted when it didn't. Yeah, if you want if you want a better perspective on Neon Genesis Evangelion, just go to Joey's channel. He did a Let's Fight episode where he talks about people who hate on Neon, Gen Neon Genesis Evangelion. I'd put I'd recommend his opinion over Strider's because Joey actually knows what the hell he's talking about. Yeah, and what's wrong with that kind of development? What's wrong with a character starting out good and then degrading? That can be interesting when written well. I haven't seen Ready Player One, so I'd have to look it up to see how practical it is. 
But odds are, if it's going down the SAO route where they use VR technology to explain it, then yeah, that's unrealistic. Neon Genesis Evangelion actually has a pretty damn good soundtrack. One of the best I've heard in a long time. No, it's not you. My own personal gripe with Death Note was the later episode's story felt flat. The ending felt so disappointing too, but... I am so sick and tired of having to defend Light Yagami from morons like this. Because there is no there is no good guys or bad guys. There is only morally gray characters. Even the author himself described L as evil. Well, you completely missed the point because you're not supposed to want L. You're not supposed to want Light to lose.
I mean, this dude's video didn't get dislike bombed, but it probably should have. Like, I am so sick and tired of having to defend Light Yagami from idiots like him. I just... Like, I'd, how do you completely miss the point of Light Yagami's character that badly? Light is possibly the most interesting character in the entire damn series. This is why I have plans to make a video called Why Light Yagami Was Right. Because not only is Light Yagami the most interesting character, but Light Yagami at the end of the day was right, whether his haters want to admit it or not. And as for Robin, I have my own problems with her. Her review of Happy Sugar Life, her dog shit review of Listen to Me Girls, I Am Your Father, which she described as, quote, pedo bait, even though it's the most ABC family slice of life show you could ever watch in your life. But because the, the main three characters were lollies, I guess apparently that makes the show pedo bait. So according to these morons, if your series has lollies as the main character, regardless of the context, it's automatically pedo bait. Phantom Strider seems like the kind of moron that would enjoy Light Yagami from the live-action Death Note. I get the feeling that Phantom Strider doesn't get out much. Because if he got out, if he got out more often, he'd probably realize that people like the characters from Elfin Lead exist. There are characters out there that'll straight up beat the crap out of you just for your skin color. Okay? I mean, we live in a world where people will literally give you brain damage if you vote for the wrong politician. Let that sink in before you tell me that Elf and Lied characters are unrealistically cruel. We live in a cruel, rotten world. I could make an entire video based on his comments on Elf and Lead alone. Because there's so... It's just... He completely misses the point of Elf and Lead. And again, 
just like all those losers that hated on the Joker movie, he uses the exact same garbage arguments. Like, I might go full EFAP on some of these people, get some guests together, and just absolutely roast them. Because some of these people, I just... I don't get it sometimes. I mean, I know some people give me crap for my opinions, but... Damn. How do some of these people exist? Oh, he better not go after Jigsaw. You leave Daddy Jigsaw alone. John Kramer, and I will fight anyone on this. John Kramer is the best horror icon, at least in terms of horror movies. I will fight anyone on this. Jigsaw is better than Chucky, better than Freddy Krueger, better than Jason Voorhees, better than Michael Myers, better than Leatherface. He is far more interesting, compelling, human than any of those guys could ever hope to be. Jigsaw is such a fascinating character. What makes Jigsaw so fascinating is that he's not just a generic monster. He's a, he's a human being who was brought to the brink and he just completely snapped. And he developed his own philosophy, his own method to try to help better people. See, most of the people John Kramer went after were shitty people who were either ruining their own lives or ruining other people's lives. And he wants to rehabilitate them through his philosophy. Like, John Kramer's philosophy alone is very fascinating. Like, I like the idea that John Kramer is this more philosophical figure that doesn't really see himself as a killer. I think that's far more interesting than just some... Than some mama's boy that goes around slaughtering camp counselors. Or some child molester that comes back to life through nonsensical dream demons and kills you in your dreams. Or some loser that dresses up as a serial killer so that way he can gain fame and notoriety. Seriously, Ghostface might be one of the most lame of them all. Yeah, and if he ever went after Jigsaw, I would go to war with him immediately. It's going to look like that scene from 300 when I'm done with him. Like, anyone who says that John Kramer is a shit character, I will fight you on that. I want to watch this video of John Kramer's legacy that an awesome fan made, but I don't know if I could because, again, I don't want to get claimed by Lionsgate. But it's a really damn good video. Like, I'm super tempted to pull it up, but I'm almost certain I might get copyright claimed, which I'm really trying to avoid. Even though, truth be told, YouTube doesn't pay me jack, so I don't even know why I even bother sometimes.
I've always wanted to review the Saw films. I don't know what's been taking me so long to get around to it. I've even been been working on my own John Kramer uh, tribute video. I just haven't gotten around to finishing it yet. I think we'll watch one more video and then I might go. Pinhead used to be an interesting horror villain, then they ruined him. Because here's the thing, Pinhead is not technically a villain. As Pinhead puts it, demons to some, angels to others. The Cenobites were always meant to be more ambiguous. It is you that decides whether or not they are good or evil. John Kramer is one of the best horror movie characters ever. I am super excited for the new Saw movie coming out in the next couple of years. They could keep making Saw films and I'd never get tired of it. As long as you got Tobin Bell playing Jigsaw, I'm sold. That's another thing though, don't you dare get anyone else to play Jigsaw but Tobin Bell. I will not accept that. Another thing that makes John Kramer great is his motivations. They make sense. Most of the motivations of other horror icons either make no sense or are just stupid. Someone please try to justify to me that Jason Voorhees' motivations in any of the freaking Friday the 13th movies make freaking sense. In fact, I'm making a ranker video of all the horror icons. Screw it. Come at me, horror community. Some of the best scenes with John Kramer is just listening to him talk to other characters, understanding his backstory and philosophy are some of the best scenes in this series. I hate it when people just say that the Saw films are nothing but torture porn. Bullshit. And that's what I respect about John Kramer. It's all about principle with him. Let's do we all. 
Caesar is what started me in my work. It was the moment I decided to end my life. He brought meaning to it. I had literally driven myself into suicide, and I had failed. My body had not been strong enough to fill cancer cells, and I had lived through a plunge off a cliff. But to my amazement, I was alive, and I was determined to spend the rest of my days testing the fabric of human nature. What do you want from me? What do I want? I want to play a game. I'm the man you call Jack Saul. One of my favorite scenes in the entire Saw series is when Hoffman meets Jigsaw for the first time. Such a great scene. I own all these movies on DVD, and when the and when any new Saw films come out, I will own those on DVD. Another might be my favorite horror anime, but the Saw series might be my favorite horror series, horror movies. Like, sure, you have all the traps, but they're not meant to be quote-unquote torture porn. I remember they said the same thing about the Hostel films, and they were wrong about that, too. In fact, I like the traps. It's a far more ingenious and interesting thing that John uses instead of just a generic knife or a chainsaw. He puts them in devices that his victims can only escape through their own means. Exactly. I mean, if you want an example of uh, torture porn, go play Demonophobia. That's an actual example of that. It's an Arrow Girl game. Which is a subject, which is a genre specific around the torture and suffering of the character. It's possibly the most vile fetish I've ever come across in my time on the internet. So, you want torture porn? Go play Demonophobia. But you should also play Demonophobia because it's a good game. Chills up my spine every time I see that. I am notorious for defending the Saw films. I never get what all the hate is about. I watch all the videos from all the people that give the Saw franchise crap. I'm never able to see what the issue is. Yeah, I mean, I will acknowledge the Saw films do have some weird continuity errors 
and the timeline is a little bit messed up. But as someone who grew up with the uh, Kingdom Hearts and Legend of Zelda timeline, trust me, I've seen worse. How about I introduce you guys to the Fate timeline? Good luck. My favorite Saw movie is the sixth one. I loved the messages. Uh, I, I actually liked a lot of the political stuff that was in Saw 6. I found it extremely interesting. And the main game was also really interesting. I love how John Kramer just utterly dismantles this insurance company that's ruining people's lives and just exposes this man for the monster that he is. And I love that he's forced to confront his own health insurance policies in the main game. It's so interesting to see this character get a dose of his own medicine and see the consequences of his actions. Even the shots they take at the financial collapse that also was happening when that movie came out was also pretty good. And of course it has some of the best traps in the series. All I need to say is Shotgun Carousel. That's all I really need to say. But it's not just the Shotgun Carousel. While that might be one of the most iconic traps outside of maybe the Reverse Bear Trap, some of the other traps in Saw 6 are also really creative. The Acid Needle Trap was also brutal. Don't worry, I think I'm going to end the stream here anyway. I think I've I think I've done my best to entertain you guys enough for now, and I am working on some other videos. For example, I'm working on a remaster to my top 10 anime I hate that everyone else likes. As annoying as some of Enigma's criticisms were, and some of it were pretty useless, and I'll get into that in my response video, there were some points I agree with him on that I could have done better job explaining. So I'm going to also work on getting that finished as well because I was ashamed that I wasn't as clear on certain things as I should have been. So yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this stream and I'm going to hopefully get some new videos out soon. And if you guys are interested, I can upload that video I mentioned of my character singing, which was meant to be like a pseudo-response to uh, Fishboy and Enigma. But I'm not sure if I want to release it, because I don't want to potentially look like I'm still trying to keep the drama going with them, because I'm not... I don't know, I mean, if you guys want to see it, I'll upload it, but if not, I'll just keep it in the archives. I don't know. If you're interested, just let me know in the comments what you think of potentially me releasing that.